The shortwave revival. Is it actually taking place? Well, there could be at least a shortwave blip. I mean, I've not seen the phrase shortwave radio uh, in mainstream media in newspapers for many, many decades. But of course, being in there over the past month or so, uh, news of the BBC having extra transmitters coming on the air and Radio Ukraine taking out shortwave transmitters. This is the English service of Ukrainian radio. This is Ukrainian radio with its one-hour English language broadcast from Kiev. We've been talking about shortwave being used in terms of emergency for many, many decades. The internet goes down, towers are taken down, severe weather, shortwave will be there because, of course, all you need for shortwave is the guy with the transmitter and the guy with the receiver, like something like that. And, of course, that's where number stations and spy stations come in. Nobody can trace who's receiving it. All you need is a little radio in your pocket like that and, uh, and the transmitter at the other end transmitting the code. One of the things that prompted me to make this video was an article in Radio.com by Daniel Robinson and Keith Perrin. And uh, that article said, Why Reviving Shortwave is a Non-Starter. Actually, it was an interesting article. But he did liken uh, shortwave radios to VHS video recorders because they said, well, the reason shortwave can't take off is because there's not the receivers. People might have some old receivers in attics that have been there for years who don't work anymore. That's not really a very good point because, you know, you can buy shortwave radios. These regularly sell out, so people must be using them. I don't see any VHS video recorders uh, being brought out at times of emergency. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I preferred Betamax. That was a much better picture, wasn't it, the Betamax? And of course, for many decades, radio hams have been prepared for this situation. Hams have always been very interested in emergency communication. We've got a few here. There's many, many, but three in the US. ARES, that's an emergency communications organization operated by the American Radio Relay League. There's RACES, and then there's Skywarn, that's a volunteer program with trained severe weather spotters. In the UK, we've got Raynet, that's been going a long time. That's involved with the RSGB, I do believe. All these are linked in the description. Another thing that I think helps this little blip in the graph of shortwave popularity is the fact that I think people are generally quite bored with the homogenized sort of style that uh, the big radio groups are putting out. But for picking up something quirky, something exciting, for people who like twiddling knobs, you know, we like twiddling knobs, us radio people, then, you know, with a shortwave, you may well find something quite interesting. With these little radios, that radio is about 80 quid. When shortwave was big, if you like, a few decades ago, to get a radio receiver that performed like that, you'd be spending £500 or more. There are new stations, I did mention that, Germany are quite favourable towards shortwave radio, and they've licensed a few small uh, shortwave broadcasters. One of them is called shortwaveradio.de. I've been involved with that a bit. The reception on shortwave varies depending on the state of the sun cycles and sunspots. But the, the important thing is that this is the right time. So we're now coming up in the solar cycle where there's going to be more sunspots and hopefully better reception on shortwave, so it could be a good time to get into it. Right, shortwave revival, yes, we'll say there is one. There is, there is one. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. This has been a Long in the Tooth television production. Subscribe to Peter's channel for more short bites of information for the radio generation.